Hi, my name is Brian Stephen Adams from The Nighttime Project. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this deep dive video series on creating hybrid orchestral music using musical analysis and templates to help overcome writer's block. This is season one, episode four, and in this episode, we will be looking at thinning out the string parts in the intro and the pre-A section. We'll be taking a quick look at psychoacoustics and discussing why it's important to not get bogged down by the sheer amount of VST libraries at our disposal. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay, let's bring this sub back in. I'm not going to do the pulse just yet. So what I'm going to do with this slot is I'm going to bring the modulation back up. See, now this is what I'm talking about. Now, sometimes when I make the notes, I'll put in, and you'll see this in future videos, that I put in psychoacoustic, because sometimes you hear things that aren't there. So for me, I'm hearing a choir almost like a children's choir in this section here, but there isn't a children's choir in the reference. But it's the way that the psychoacoustics of this whole track is working at the moment. There is something in this. Right, so to my ears, it's the way that the strings are sounding that's kind of given it this psychoacoustic feel. So I think I'm gonna put a children's choir in there. No, I don't want that. I want So this is Genesis Children's Choir, but I want to find the oo sound. I wonder if I could copy down the string chords, but ignoring the basses.
Okay, so that's interesting. Let's go back to the template a minute. Let's just do something. So that second violin, I wanted to have a look at the ostinato part anyway. So I think I can do that now. So we are using cinematic studio strings. Now this is going to be playing the ostinato that was originally played by, initially, this bit, this droid arp. So what I want it to be doing is, where are you? Now that actually is going to be doing that. Let's have a look at this a second. Let's just take this. So. Minus 50. Let's drag this slot to here, copy this down to Berlin and enable Berlin. So the CSS is going to be doubled with Berlin Inspire Spiccatas, but I want to make sure that they're panned to the right, because I don't think I did this with the other track I was working on. So I can fade that in, according to my little template. I can double the... See, that was going to be doubled anyway. I will double these CSS. Or shall I just do... No, I'll let that sit there for now. But let's get the first violin. Because what I'll end up doing... I know I'll end up doing this anyway. Is this string ensemble... I'll break this string ensemble down into all its little parts, into first, second, viola, cello, and bass, and I'll break those all down. I won't do that now, but I'll eventually do that. And then these ensembles will just sit in the background. Second violin. Now, let's just solo that. Let's take this up an octave. No, let's hold on to it. Let's hold on to it at this octave. CSS violins will be doubled with Spitfire chamber strings. I like the way these two sound together. So I'm going to put that and copy that down. And again, the same with the second violin. Yep, so again, violins two. Let's copy this down. And eventually, oh, I might as well just do it all. Just do it all now. See these Tycos I put in here? I mean, just, they need to be, they need to be there, but maybe just not so prominent. Another thing to mention is that with the amount of VST instruments available to us, 
you kind of get overwhelmed by the sheer amount of them and what you can put in, what you should put in, and then what you should leave out and what you can reuse. It's actually a good idea to try and reuse um, some of what you've used before instead of trying to pile new stuff on top of new stuff. And to bring back some of the elements you've used before to kind of give your track continuity. So, for example, I know the Droid Arp Ostinato. In this pre-section here, these second violins... are playing what the droid arp was playing, which was this thing. So what I'm thinking I could do is I could bring the droid arp in here to fade this out while the violins fade in. That's what's in my head. Now I know this is copied over. So I'm gonna reverse this. So I'm going to have a look at adding the volume and then to gradually bring this volume down. So these, let me put these two I'm not going to pack them into a folder, but what I will do is I'll... Mm, no, you know what I'm going to do? They're going to be halfway through. Let's just bring it down and see what happens. Now, with regards to percussion, always remember, you've only got two pairs of hands. There is no point in trying to do too much in one go. See, what I tend to do is I tend to duplicate the contact instruments and just add layers on top. For me, that makes sense. So, for example, I know now that the Tycos need to be a bit stronger and they now need to be doubled. So I'm going to duplicate this track complete. So I'm going to add just those three. Oops. That's slightly out, but that's okay. I need something for this bit here, like a crash. Let me have a look and see what I can find. And once again, Vengeance Trance Sensation Volume 1. Maybe that one? Might not even work. Let's have a look. Okay, so I just want you to have that little crash in there. I think that what will end up happening is that I will be fading these percussive instruments in, but I'll leave them as they are for now because I want to go from this pre-A to this A section. This A section is going to have to be the one that's quite big, then leading up to a lead brass, I think. This is where the percussion is really going to kind of like fill out. Let's have a look at this a second. Right, let's pull all of these back over. So what we want is something really to emphasize these. This is where the pattern like really needs to kind of get laid down. Let's loop this here for a minute. Now, I know I could have done this in a bar of four and duplicated it, but I wanted that there to be some sort of variation in this particular section. This one has to be the melody line. So this has to be whatever the full melody is. Right, so these are gonna do the octaves now.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. In the next episode, we'll be looking at adding a choir to this piece, programming some more percussion, and then we'll also be looking at introducing the brass. Thanks again, take care, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.